Hey Mr. Bill, Poker Peeps, welcome to the vlog. Interesting week this week. I played at the WSOP Circuit in Choctaw. I also tried a new club and had some interesting things there too. Love playing tournaments. Tournaments this week, not so good. Cash, not as much fun. Cash, good this week. <laughs> So I just played a ton of hands this week, and I don't know, maybe it's me getting older, but in the tournament, I was very, very focused, and I forgot to record a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and then in the cash, I was having so much fun, and I was winning, and I forgot to record a bunch of them. <laughs> so anyhow, I do have some hands, I remembered some, I did record some of them, so at least we have enough for the vlog. And something happened to me that's never happened to me before on the poker felt. I got a royal flush. Yes. So you'll hear about that during this vlog. So with that, let's get to some poker. All right, so a number of us in my Wednesday Night Poker League uh, decided we would go play in the WSOP Seniors 6 Max. Pro Series of Poker Circuit event. This is the first event, Senior 6 Max. Let's go. So I went with Rob and Wayne. I think those guys got there on time. I got there a little bit late. I late regged about the end of level two and then just had a horrible start. <laughs> I couldn't win a hand. I probably played too many hands. I bluffed wrong or I didn't get value. No, I didn't win any hands, so there was no not getting value. <laughs> but it was not a very good start. We're going to the first break. I did not have a very good start. Uh, I'm down to 5,200. Actually, I got down to 1,200. And I haven't worked my way back to 5,200. That's how bad it was. But hey, I still got chips. So with blinds at 100, 200, and a $200 big blind, Danny, I'm in the big blind with 8,900. I have jack of clubs, eight of spades. There's a whole bunch of people. Six of us at $200, no raise, and I check my option. The flop with 1,400 in the pot comes nine of spades, 10 of spades, jack of spades. I flop top pair, open-ended straight flush draw. The small blind leads for 600. I think for a minute, I'm wondering, should I be raising here? Should I not? I make the call. There's two folds, and then a guy raises to 1,500. The small blind calls, and now what do I do? There's now 5,000 in the pot. It's 900 for me to call, but I only have 8,100 left. I decided to make the call. I don't like this. I think I should have jammed in this spot. So the turn with 5,900 in the pot comes the six of hearts. It goes check, check, and the guy bets 2,000. The small blind calls, and again, what do I do? So now the pot has 9,900 in it. I have, what, 7,200 left? Is it too late to jam? Did I wait too long or not? I think I should have jammed again, and I did not. I made the call. I don't like this. I think it's the worst possible option. I should have either folded or jammed. The river now, 11,900 in the pot, comes a five of diamonds, a complete brick for me. It goes check, check. The guy bets 8,000, and we both fold, and he shows only Jack King. Okay, now with blinds at 200, 400, 400, I only have 3,800. I'm in the cutoff with King Jack. Uh, the under the gun makes it 900. There's a caller. I'm shoving all in here. I go all in. The under the gun makes the call. The other guy folds. The board comes. Queen, 10, 3. So I flopped open-ended, but then it runs out 7, 6, and he has ace, 10, and I missed my open-ended, so I am out on bullet number one. All right, failure's just a setback. It doesn't, it's not the end-all, be-all. We're gonna try this again. We're gonna see if we can't do better this time, chip up and win. Obviously, I, uh, I got knocked out. Very sad, very, very sad. Right there, those are the bad people that knocked me out earlier. We're gonna try it again now. It's that guy. No. Seat, seat, seat four. No, no, seat three. There's a bad guy. Knocked me out. <laughs> so, bullet number two. I, I sat down. I watched the first hand. I know a number of other guys at the table. Second hand, I pick up pocket jacks. Uh, the under the gun, who's a very, very loose, splashy player, I've played with him a number of times, makes it 1200. The guy next to him, who I do not know, calls the 1200. I raise it up to 4,000. It comes back to the original raiser. 
He shoves all in, has me covered, he has 12,000. The other guy folds, and now what do I do? Again, this guy is very, very loose. I've played with him many times before. Um, I go ahead and make the call. If he has a shove range that's any one of these threes, twos plus, sevens plus, eights plus, plus some of these other uh, broadways, then the worst I am is like 52%. And at best, if he's shoving with two two plus, I am at 67% favorite. So I don't think it was a bad call. He turns over pocket nines, yes sir. The flop comes, ace of clubs, nine of hearts, six of hearts. Fate has it, he's flopped a set. Five of diamonds, four of clubs. I am out on the very first hand I played on my bullet number two. Poker sucks. My second rebuy lasted one hand. I got it all in, pocket jacks against the guy's pocket nines. He spikes a nine on the flop, unbelievable. So I go on up to the Choctaw uh, poker room where they're running the cash games this time. They're starting a brand new 2-5 game. Normally during the week they don't get 2-5 games but because of the tournament, there's a number of people who want to play. So I jump into this 2-5 game, brand new table. Almost everybody buys in for $500. So on this hand, I'm not gonna tell you what I have. I'm gonna have you guys do a little sleuthing here and you guys try and figure out what I have. Uh, I have $450. I am on the button. I button straddle for 10. There's seven players at $10. The flop with 70 in the pot comes three of diamonds, six of clubs, nine of hearts, and it checks all the way around. Wow. The turn is the two of hearts. There's three guys that check. A guy named Scott, he's a good player, but a little bit bitter. He makes it 30. The cutoff calls, and I call, and the under the gun calls. So, Given this, you have to think, what could I possibly be calling with here? The river, with 190 in the pot, is the seven of spades. It goes check, check to the cutoff, who makes it 35. I raise it up to 150. First two guys fold, the next guy tanks, and he folds. So, what could I possibly have here? What could you put me on that I would bet $150 and on this kind of board? The answer is I had very, very little. <laughs> it was almost 100% a bluff. Uh, I had three fives. If anybody calls me, I am absolutely losing because a pair of threes is not winning this hand. So when the two guys check and the other guy puts out a very, very small bet of $35 into what, 170? I think he's so weak. I think he's just taking a stab. I don't think the other guys would have checked if they had hit, for example, a straight. So I bump it up because I just don't think the guy can call. And he did tank for a little bit, but he did eventually fold. Uh, I told a little white line said, oh gosh, I had I had 5-8 because we had the discussion that 5-8 was not the nuts. 8-10 was the nuts and I didn't even realize that. I should have said I had 8-10. <laughs> I didn't. I had a pair of threes, a nice bluff. It got through. This is definitely one of the things you can do when it is looks just so weak around the table is make a big bet. You're going to win, I'll bet you 85, 90% of the time. All right, the next hand of interest. I am under the gun with $650. I have five of spades, five of clubs. I make it 15, the plus one, and middle position two. This is a woman who is very, very sticky. The button and the big blind call. So the flop with 76 in the pot comes ace of clubs, bingo bongo, five of diamonds, nine of spades. First guy checks. I bet 30, the plus one, and the middle position two make the call. The turn, 166 in the pot, is the jack of clubs. I lead out for 85, next guy folds, and then this woman in the MP2 is very, very sticky, makes the call. What a great and fantastic situation it is for me. The river, with 336 in the pot, is the queen of hearts. Now, I wanna make sure I get some value here, so I bet 125, and she makes the call. I show my set of fives. She says good hand and shows. Ace nine for two pair, ugh. Even before seeing what she has though, I should have I should have sized this up to 170, 175. She showed willingness on the turn to just keep calling away. <laughs> so I should have sized this up. I did not, I lost a little bit of value. Still did okay, but lost a little value. 
All right, the last interest in the cash game, I have a very, very good player to my left. I don't like that at all. I'm under the gun with Ace of Hearts, King of Hearts. I like that a lot. I have $750. I make it 20. The guy to my left makes the call. The cutoff and the button both call also. So the flop with 87 in the pot comes. So the flop with 87 in the pot comes. Ace of clubs, nine of hearts, eight of clubs. I like it a lot. I check, the very good player next to me makes it 30, the other two guys fold, and I make the call. So why did I check this flop? Well, there's a number of reasons. I like to mix it up every once in a while. You can't do the same thing every single time. And I think this guy to my left, who's a very, very good player, is going to smell out the fact that if I bet this, that I have an ace, and probably a pretty good ace because I raised under the gun. The turn with 147 in the pot, it's a really good card also. It's the six of hearts. Now I have the nut flush draw also, but I check. He bets 50 and I make the call. Again, the question here is, should I be raising here? I like a raise here a lot better than I did on the flop. A raise here maybe looks like a flush draw, and I do have a flush draw, but I've also got top pair. So I wish I had raised on this one. The river with 247 in the pot comes the ace of spades. Um, I want to make it look like I am taking a little stab at missed hearts. So I bet relatively small, $85. He makes the call. I show my ace and he bucks. And the question on the river for me is, do I bet small looking to get a little bit of value or do I really, really make it large and over bet jam here, making for sure it looking like missed hearts. I don't know which one is right. Uh, I may have gotten no value at all if I had made a large bet. This guy was really, really a good player. Um, maybe I got the maximum with my small bet of 85. Who knows? All right, while I was playing the cash game, my buddies are down still playing the Senior Six Max, and I'm checking in on them all the time, and they get down to the money, then four tables, then three tables, then two tables. When they got down to two tables, I decided I'm gonna stop playing cash, cash out, and go down and see how my friends are doing. So I cashed out for a win of $650, which is paid for my two <laughs> bullets in the, in the tournament, and I still won $150. That's not so bad. So with like 13, 14 players left, three of my friends are still in the tournament. My really good buddy Rob, uh, Mark Donovan, and Rick Merritt are all still in the tournament, and I'm rooting for all of them, although I got 10% piece of Rob, so I'm rooting for him to win the whole thing. Senior six packs is down to 11 players. Three of my buddies are left in it. Rob's in the green, Mark's in the Havana hat. Mark's trying to go back to back. He won this event last year. Pretty cool stuff. My other buddy, Rick Merritt, is there in the hat and the glasses. Down to 11, senior six max. And it was interesting. I was sitting behind Rob close enough that I could see his cards, so I was sweating what he was doing. It was really fun, and it was also very, very educational. I certainly was seeing it differently when I was sweating Rob than when I was playing. In fact, Rob and I had some really great conversation and some strategy talk actually during the tournament and then afterwards to talk about some of the hands and what we would have done differently or why he did this or why he maybe he should have done something else. Uh, but it was very, very interesting. And to do it at this level tournament was pretty awesome. Unfortunately, Rob busted in 11th place, $1,250. I got 10% of that, yay me. <laughs> But my buddies Rick and Mark made it to the final table. It's a six max. They go to the final table at seven. I watched for a little bit. Nobody busted. I told them I got to go, man. It was like 2.30 in the morning. It's a two hour ride home and I had to work in the morning. So I left. Now my buddy Mark actually won this very tournament the year before. He had the WSOP circuit ring on his hand, a big old honking thing. So he was trying to go back to back. How awesome is that? Anyhow, Rick went out seventh. Mark made it to day two where they had played down to only three players and he's got a chance to go back to back. The final three players decide to chop the money at $8,400 a piece, so that's not so bad, and then play for the ring and the win. My buddy Mark came in third. <laughs> but a great run, Mark. Uh, fantastic. First last year, third this year. That is awesome, man. Great job to all three of you guys. It was awesome sweating each one of you guys. 
So while I was at Choctaw in the cash game, when a seat became available, a woman came to the game and she played for quite a while. And then she asked me, are you Bill that does the videos? And I said, yes, I am. And she said that she watches. And she told me that she is from the club Rockets here in the Dallas area. And maybe we could get together and do something and maybe I should come check out her club. And that's exactly what I did on Saturday night. So for you guys in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, let me give you my first impression of Rockets. Number one is busy. Many, many games going on. Uh, they're open every single day, so there's always a place to play. They have tons of tournaments, oh my gosh. And they have tons of bonuses, lots of giveaways, and things like that. Uh, the other thing is I felt very, very safe uh, at the location where they're at. Of course it helps when you know a whole bunch of the players and not like I know many of them very, very well, but I had played with many of them, probably most of them. Uh, one of my friends, Damon Lara was there. His wife, Renee, is waitressing there and she's just a wonderful person too. So it's nice to see Damon and, and Renee there. Hey guys, give you a shout out in case you watch my videos. <laughs> It was really good seeing you guys. So given the number of people and the number of tournaments and the busyness and friends there, I would say my overall first impression was very, very positive. I enjoyed my time at, at Rockets and uh, I will definitely go back. So on this evening, they had two tables of 125 uh, No Limit Hold'em. They had one PLO game and they had a tournament going on. <clears throat> Um, I jumped into the 125 No Limit Hold'em game, uncapped game, minimum 100, maximum uncapped. I bought it for 500, which made me the big stack at this table. Now the other table that was running, which was probably there a long time before this uh, second table, had a lot more chips on the table, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So at this cash table, I washed a few hands. Seemed like the standard opening raise of about $15. So when I picked up Jack of Hearts, Queen of Hearts in the hijack and it checked around to me, I bet 15 and only the small blind called. So the flop with 32 in the pot comes Ace of Hearts, 10 of Hearts, four of clubs. I flop a flush draw, actually a royal flush draw. Um, the guy had checked in the dark. I made it 20 and he makes the call. The turn now with 72 in the pot. Bingo, bongo, King of Hearts. My first ever royal flush on the very first hand that I played in cash at Rockets. Unbelievable. And it goes check, check. I want him to catch up. The river, nine of clubs. He leads into me all in for unfortunately his effective stack of only 65 more. Ugh. <laughs> I obviously call. I say I have a royal flush. Holy cow. So as with many of these clubs, the Royal Flush uh, does get earn some bonuses. <laughs> so I won an entry into a $6,000 guaranteed tournament in a few weeks on a Saturday. I also got a cash bonus of not very much, only $235. And that's because their bad beat had just been hit. He said normally that if you get a Royal Flush, you're gonna get at least $1,100. $1, I got $235. It's still better than nothing, but man, it could have been so much more. That was good news, bad news, right? <laughs> so the last significant hand that I played in cash at Rockets, we're gonna do as a you be the villain. All right, I am under the gun. I have $650. I make it 15. Everybody folds to you on the button. You have 10 of spades, jack of spades, and you make the call. So the flop with 37 in the pot comes ace of spades, six of spades, four of diamond. I check. You bet $15. I check raised to 40, and you make the call. So the turn with 117 in the pot is the king of spades. I check it, you bet, 55, and I make the call. The river now comes the six of hearts. I tank and I lead out for 185. What do you do? The player in your spot made the fold. So I ended up having a six of spades for a full house. And so I'll explain a couple of things. On the flop, I checked raise because I wanted to get money in the pot. Uh, it wasn't a large check raise at all. I figured if he had something good or a draw, he would certainly make the call. I called the turn because it really is not a huge bet. And I don't know if I have to hit my full house to win, but 
I'm gonna reevaluate after I see the card and see what you do if I miss. When the river comes with my full house, and it's relatively well disguised, although he might think I have pocket aces, um, I wanna make it look a little bit bluffy, so that's why I overbet to 185. In fact, the guy said, if I had bet 65 or $70, he was gonna snap full. But the bet of 185 made it look like maybe I missed or wanted to represent a full house without it being there. He eventually did make the right fold, but at least I made him think about it. Perfect. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Never had had a Royal Flush before. Now I've had one. I'd love to hear some of your stories about a big hand that you've had. This vlog is coming out on Thursday, November 7th, as I am on the way to Choctaw to play in the WSOP circuit, a second seniors tournament, and then, depending on how it goes, on Friday, maybe the main event. We will see. Let's have some run good, let's have some play good, and let's do it. I'm going up there with my buddy Rob. We're gonna swap 10% again on any of the tournaments that we play together, and my goal this time is to make him some money because it's been kind of one-sided here lately, so I'm gonna do it. So sorry about the Mr. Bill meetup game. I expected to have it in October, then maybe I expected to have it in November. I'm not even sure if that's gonna happen. It may not be till December. I've been just extremely busy, and so eh, life happens, right? All right, guys, I think that's going to do it. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for your comments and pressing buttons and just watching and being involved in some of the Mr. Bill Poker Vlog stuff. You guys have a wonderful, fantastic, and blessed week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.